Spirit, please fertilize our hearts. May we be receptive to your word and enable us to be doers of the word. It will come without ambiguity and we shine out every dark patches in our lives. Our audience will also be blessed. In Jesus' most gracious name we pray. Brethren, we are dealing with casting our cares upon the Lord. <clears throat> because he cares for us. Of course, we have our text. Project our text for us, please. <clears throat> Second Peter 5, 7. Media, are you with us? We've started, though. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. First Peter chapter 5. Is it Second Peter 5, 6? Please hurry up. Second Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Media, are you with us at all? Sorry, first. Please, chapter 7. Thank you very much. Forgive me. Casting all your care upon him. For he does what? He cares for you. Next verse. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom to devour. Give me amplified in verse of verse 7. 1 Peter 5 verse 7. Casting the whole of your care. What does that mean? All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. On him, for Jesus cares for you. How does he care for you? Affectionately and cares about you what? Watchfully. We are talking something very serious here. Leave it at that place. No, go back. Leave it at Amplified. In Amplified verse 7. Just leave it there. We have been taught while dealing with this topic that it takes humility to cast your cares, your anxieties on the Lord. Well, I was only the proud that refused to humble themselves. Say, Lord, I have this care. Please take it off me. We just sang a hymn. What needless pain do I carry or bear? What grief do I take around? All oh, because I did not take it to him. A blank check has been issued to us by Jesus. Feel it and give it to me. Leave it there. But the cares of this world keep choking believers. And we want to help us. We've learned in the series of the parables of Jesus. That when you want to help yourself. Self-help. Legalism. Self-effort. Labor. Toils. Is the opposite of accepting the grace of God. So this morning I want to deal with something that will help us. How do I cast my cares? What enables me to cast my cares? I want to take off by saying that your knowledge, your foundation knowledge of the gospel is critical to casting care on the Lord. You cannot put a cat before a horse and expect it to perform its task without an appreciation of what God has offered mankind in Christ you will not understand why you should cast your cares on him in other words if you lack the foundational knowledge you will be tossed to and fro you will see carry your cares so let's look at a very interesting scripture Luke chapter 6, verses 47 and 48. Jesus teaching. And can I just make a statement which is very fundamental? The fact that you are a believer doesn't immune you or protect you from the cares of life. The crisis in life will hit you, the storms in life will come for you, the rains will hit at you. 
So as a believer, you are not immune. You are not, write it down because wrong teaching will tell you that nothing will touch you. They will even quote out of context. Touch not my anointed to my prophet. No, nothing will come near you. No. It will come for you. Where is the scripture? Please, uh, media. The other big screen is not showing. What did I quote? Luke 6, 48. For everyone who comes to me and listens to my word, whether it's my teaching, okay, fine. I will get there. Sorry, I missed what I wanted to show you. Give me just one second. Check Matthew for me. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 47. There's something I'm looking for. 6 verse 47. Matthew 6 47. <laughs> Media. Am I quoting out of... Uh, Sorry. Just bear with me one second. Matthew 6. Okay, let's deal with this. I'll get to that later. Verse 31. Matthew 6:31. I will come to that scripture I wanted to use later. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, take no thought. Do not worry. And be anxious saying, what are we going to have to eat? Or what are we going to have to drink? Or what are we going to have to wear? Please, 32. For the Gentiles, the hidden, wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things. And your heavenly Father knows well that you need them. Praise the Lord. But seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness. That is his way of doing and being right. Then all these things you seek will be given you besides. Praise the Lord. The scripture I wanted to look at is Jesus likening a believer to two scenarios. People two scenarios. The house that is built on a rock. So write it down. I will give you the scripture later. He who hears the word of God, Jesus said, and abides in that word is like he who builds his heart upon the rock. The rains will come. That is cares of life. Economic situations will come. You can't pay your rent. Family disputes will arise and want to scatter your home. The rain will beat at it. The storm will hit it hard. You will lose your job. I say there is no God for me anymore. Maybe you took loan from the bank. They want to foreclose your property. But he said, that house stood still. Why? Because it's founded upon the rock. There is another scenario he gave. The other house was built on the mere sand. The rains came. The tempest. The wind. They battered it. And it fell. And he said, great was the fall of that house. So is he who is not founded on the rock. Brethren, like I said, a believer is not immune from challenges. How rooted are you in the word of God? That's a rock. What's your foundation like? 
Are you tossed to and fro by every wave of doctrine? Are you still easily swayed by gospels being preached around? Brethren, if you are not strong as by your foundation, you'll be swept away. So let me say what Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Galatians 1 verse 6. We alluded to it this morning in our workers' class. I am surprised and astonished that you are so quickly turning renegades and deciding who invited and called you by the grace to the merited favor of Christ, Messiah, that you are transferring your allegiance to a different or even opposition uh, gospel. Paul said, I am surprised that you are moving away to another gospel, except you are founded on the gospel of Christ. The cares of life will choke you out of your faith. Write that down. Except you are founded on the gospel of Christ. The cares of life in the form of another gospel will choke your faith. Those are the rains that will hit you to check whether your foundation is on the rock. But you must be steadfast. Tell your neighbor, be steadfast. Say, be steadfast. Unmovable. Hallelujah. So Jesus warned when he was about living. He said, look, my people, there will be challenges in the world. John 14 verse 1. How do you handle these cares? You must understand and locate what Jesus said before he left. Not what your pastor said. Not what is in the manual of your church. What does the Bible say about how to handle tribulations and trials? Look up. Let not your heart be what? Ye believe in God, believe also in Give me amplified. He said, let me be agitated. Don't be what? Agitated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. How? Be distressed. Be depressed. Be agitated. Agitation takes away sleep from somebody. Anxiety. How do you handle it? What's the antidote to that? You believe, you adhere to, you trust in, you rely on God, you rely on Jesus. If you do anything outside that, it's a shortcut. Now, shortcuts don't work for a long time. You think you are smart. So, you will do, they will tell you to do seven steps for you to stay out of challenges in life. Those are all temporary moves. Jesus said, unless you trust in me. Put your faith to work. Refuse to adopt measures that are not consistent with what Christ has told you. Cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Do not carry it anymore. Cast it on me. And he said, once and for all. You should understand that there are things that will buffet your ability to cast their cares on Christ. James chapter 1 verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally or braided not and it shall be given to him. Verse 6. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Not having wisdom is a care you have. When you are confused about decision to take, it's a care, it's a worry. It's an anxiety. So you have to look for divine guidance. How do you do that? Ask your father what? In faith. Not what? I didn't hear you. Not what? What does it mean of waver? You go front and back. Don't want eh? fro. If you use that phrase, it's a very strong one because there is only one person that is Mr. To and Fro. Amen? But don't waver. Don't 
One moment, say, Lord, I believe you. And next moment, you give a negative confession. Lord, I'm the head and not the tail. And I say, oh, God, God what did I go do today now? They don't win us. Try this contract. Check my picking, though. You don't come last again. That is wavering. Amen? Amen. For he that wavereth, he that has double confession and double stand in life, it's like a wave of the sea. Driven what? with the wind and what? Toss. Remember again, parable, what Jesus said. When you build your house on Jesus, you will not be tossed. It will hit you, but you will not move. The opposite is when you don't believe. You will waver. You will be tossed to and fro. Amen? Amen? This is so important and profound. Verse 7. He who wavers, let him not, let not that man even think. Is used word think, oh, think that he shall receive anything. This is a serious thing. You see, you speed read Bible, we don't look at it. That man that is not consistent in his confession and attitude, let him not think. Let it not even come to his mind. After you humbly cast your cares on God, stay there. Allow it to be there. Don't go back and pick the cares. Don't expect God to be there to help you. He said, look at it. You can't receive anything of the Lord. It's the ammunition, the weapon the enemy has used successfully against believers. Can I tell you something? Write it down. Faith is believing when God is silent. Faith is still relying on God. Is still adhering to his doctrine. Is still trusting in him when it seems he is silent. Oh my God, where have you been? I can't hear any response from you. I am almost down and out. Lord, where are you? Faith means still being faithful to God. Believe in him. Even when it appears he's silent. In Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> The king said, if you don't bow down, we'll cast you into the fullness. He said they should hit you seven times over. At that point, some believers will expect that the angels will come and rescue them. They said, oh king, we are not mindful to talk to you about this. But let's tell you, assuming our God does not even redeem us, we are not mind. We don't have to, we will not bow. It appeared then God was silent. Brethren, have you been in a situation where that lecturer has intimidated you such that even your dean cannot help you? Nobody can save you. He says you must sleep with me or pay me money. He's like a god in that faculty or department. And it appears you are at your wit's end as a student. Or that job you be there very well. You are eminently qualified for it. Yet they pushed away your invoice. Or rather your bidding papers. And said, except you join us and sign our form, we are not going to give you. At that quiet moment, do you go back and cast your cares back by yourself? Do you take it back? What you've cast? Humility depicts your ability to cast and leave. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they cast their cares on the Lord and left it with him. I said, King, we don't have business with you. Even if our God doesn't say, we will not bow. Is it about Daniel? When he knew that the decree had been signed by the order of the Mendes and Persians, the Bible says he opened his window towards Jerusalem and prayed five times a day. And they were spying on him. In that moment of seeming silence. Faith. Let's leave the lions then. This is your own den. When doctors have issued a report, prepare for the worst. You will die in six months. 
You've already told Papi, all of us, you cast your Lord, we prayed. In that moment that we've left you and you're alone, that moment of silence, will you see trust in the Lord? What is belief? Absolute adherence to. Trusting in. Relying on the Lord. Unflinching faith. What will you do when God appears to have been quiet? No wonder the psalmist say, Oh my soul, why are thou cast down? Because he had a good foundation. What foundation do you have? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. What foundation do I have? Is it a foundation of popular gospel? Trending gospel? Entertainment gospel? Or I have deep knowledge of the word of God? This is not a plea, a beg. I mean a, a kind of a advice. No. This is not optional. Let's read together one to go. This book of the law Stop. I'm looking at you. Not everybody is reading. I'm looking at you. If you don't read, I will mention your name. One to go. What is the book of the Lord? The word of God. Shall not de- Don't forget to meditate, to speak it. So in the place of cares and worry, having cast them on Jesus, keep speaking the word of God concerning that care. Don't close your mouth. Write it down. Keep confessing the word over your situation. Consistently confess the word of God over that situation. The foundation you have in Jesus will help you locate the right word to confess. You don't do general affirmation or confession. If it's sickness, you remember 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Who himself bore our sins on his, in his body on the tree that being dead to sin we are alive unto righteousness by whose stripes we were not I am here but we were what? Healed. Say don't deal. You must know that scripture by now. You must know that he sent for this world. Psalm 107. And the world did what? He healed them and delivered them what? From their destruction. Those are the things you must hold on to concerning health matters. No. In Zion. And we are talking of the living Zion here. You carry it. Shall say I'm sick. If that is the area of sickness. If that is the care you have. I, the Lord that God teaches you how to profit if you want money. He said, Lord, put me to maximum productivity. Enlighten my understanding. Give me creativity and initiative to think beyond what others are thinking. You know the problem we believe? We are lazy. And you say, the Lord will supply my needs according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Out of context. When was the last time you sat down to enrich your knowledge by buying books? In an area you want to deal with to study. When last did you join a platform of those who are knowledgeable investing in stocks? Not the vo- not the four one nine you hear on the radio. Or go and do bet. No, don't go there because believers have no business with their bet. It's on biblical. What did I say? A false teacher or preacher claimed that he prayed for somebody and he won some bets of millions false teachers will come the last days. These are trending things you must not allow yourself to respond to. People have developed itching ears to hear such people and they hire them according to the book of Timothy. So brethren, you must empower yourself. You must study in the area of your endeavor to be knowledgeable. And then the Lord, the Holy Spirit, your teacher, We amplify your wisdom. The duty of the Holy Spirit, according to John 14, is that he will comfort you. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will help you. He will strengthen you. He shall stand by. He will navigate you. 
What it does is he opens your eyes to see what others are not seeing. And then you have the edge above them. Then we become the head and not the tail. You cannot just fold your hand. A little folding of the hand, a little sleep, a little slumber, and big boy poverty is knocking at your door. Those are cares you induce on yourself. Let that person not ever think you get when you waver. You have told Lord, Lord, I want this. Okay, my son, he gives you an idea. Go and read that. Go and do that. Go and meet Brother Mecca. Brother Mecca is into all this printing and all, asking questions. We are now in an age of AI, artificial intelligence. Some of us are sitting analog. Even me as a lawyer, I should upgrade to know how to apply AI in legal practice. The Holy Spirit will give you understanding beyond the sons of this world if you do that. Are you willing? Have you cast that care on him? Or out of arrogance, you are still doing it your own way? It's not only spiritual matters. Because you say, above all things, I wish you should prosper. In your head, even as your soul prospered. God is committed to our well-being. Amen. I didn't hear that. I said, God is committed to our well-being. That is why he said you must cast your care. But your care must be cast based on a clear knowledge of the world. Hosea 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. This is what lack of knowledge does to believers. He didn't say heathens. My people can survive or will survive are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected, so there is something that happened. The Lord has said, cast your care upon me. How do you cast your care? Dig into my word. Take with you ways as you cast your care. Lord, I'm casting this care upon you because he said, if I do this, this will happen. So, if I don't do that, it means that I lack knowledge. Or if I do it the wrong way, I refuse to trust in the Lord and say, let me do assignment. Let me go to where they say I should take steps to do certain things. No. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Most believers are left at the average level of life because we have not applied God's ways into our daily lives. That's why Joshua 1 is saying, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Then there's a bet. Instead, that bet means instead, you should meditate, cogitate, dwell on it day and night. Let it possess you. It doesn't mean you read the entire Bible one day. No, you can take with you two verses in context. For instance, the lines are falling onto me in very pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. What does that mean? Yo, papi, papi says, oh, you go. No. Have you taken time to go back? Have you checked other rendering? And own that passage as your own. Lord, your word says, the lines, situations are working for my good. It may be unpleasant for others, but for me, an exception. Because I am a child of God. Because I will not fear their fear. Because things might be working awkwardly, but because I'm a kingdom citizen. You know why we have that? Because religion is a bad thing. It's terrible. We have been told that we are Christians and we go to heaven the sweet by and by. Christ said, repent, have a change of heart for the kingdom has come. What the first Adam lost, I have reclaimed and returned it to you. Amen. Occupy till I come. Amen. Can I hear better amen? amen? So your duty as an occupier for Christ is to know your rights and privileges. Okay, let's get back to reality now. 
This book is the constitution of a believer. Let's, let's deal with it. I'm a citizen of say I'm a citizen of heaven. I didn't hear you. Where your Bible? If you did for phone, bring out your phone. This is my constitution. I'm a citizen of heaven. It contains my rights, my duties, and my obligations, including my privileges. What a, believe, what a believer should do is that, Lord, according to section this, a page this, verse this, I come to you. Because they come with two words. This is they come and cry to me. God is not moved by your emotions. The casting of your cares is drop it and know you are rising in the constitution. What section or how many sections of the Bible do you know concerning threats from people around you? Do you know Psalm 91? Put it up. These are things you should be chewing. Lord, according to Psalm 91 verse 1. From verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the... I am already in Christ. So that's the secret place talking about. Go to verse 2. Go to verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God. In Him will I... I will rely on him. I will adhere to him. I will trust in him. Surely, look up. He shall deliver me from the snare, the trap of the fowler, the enemy, the adversary, your opponent there, the fowler. And from the knowing somewhere, eh, these are figures of speech depicting challenges you face in life. Do you know this? Have you cited it? Have you relied on it? And when God appears to be silent in enforcing it for you, have you changed your mind? Have you wavered? No. You must stay there. Be still and know that I'm God. Brethren, Christianity has been distorted so that we lose our identity in Christ. So your knowledge of who you are is no longer founded on the author and finisher of our faith. Because when you know one thing that you are not just, I don't really call myself a Christian. You will be surprised to hear that. I'm a believer. That's the way I'm describing the Bible. I am a kingdom citizen. You may see that, I think, in uh, is it? Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. We are kingdom citizens. I'll get that for you. We are members of the household of faith. Praise the Lord. You will not be afraid. No, don't worry. Go back to Sam. Go back to your Sam. This, that is a scripture that you must know in times of challenges. Go back to Sam. I will get that other scripture. Psalm 91. Do you allow the pestilence to overwhelm you. Those are cares and worries. And you prayed about it. I like Papi. He says, stop. You, sometimes you call his number, his number is switched off. Because he has trained you very well to know the script. That's why come to church with your notes and pen. So that when the thing happens midnight, he should be snoring. Don't wake him up. Check your note if you don't know what to do. It's written there. You've taken so that you know which section of the constitution of citizens of heaven you will quote. You don't win a case in court by think, saying, my Lord, I think so. I think you say, this is the Lord. No. You say, my Lord, according to section this, subsection this, paragraph this, of the constitution, this is what the Lord says. On the authority of this, this is what the Supreme Court had decided before. Not what some of them are doing now anyway. You understand me? Don't quote me, yo. Based on that, because the law of God is pure and righteous. No mago mago with this law. It is when you now quote that, say, hey, my son knows what he's doing. And he will smile. I say, this is the confidence my son has in me. That when he asks me of anything, he knows I've heard him. How can he hear you when you don't know anything you are telling him? For your father to respond, you must tell him what you want. What God wants to hear is his words. 
Bible says he watches over his words intently to perform them. Do you know he doesn't blink? Can I mesmerize you? Isaiah 46, verse 19. Is it 46 or 49? When it says you have been imprinted permanently, tattooed, check verse 16. Am I right? Either 46 or 49. 49. Yes, 49. Isaiah 49, verse 7. Is it 19 or 16? Isaiah 49. This is Papi's best friend, Isaiah. 49, 16. Thank you. Behold. You know, I don't like this version, but I'll read it. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands that was I continue before. Give me amplified rendering. The world, they are so funny and stupid. They tattoo their body. They plagiarize tattooing. They don't know that. There's only one person who tattoos legitimately. Behold, I have indelibly what? Imprinted you. What does indelibly imprinted mean? Permanent. Nobody can erase you. So look at how you are before God. That is why when you cast your cares on him, understand who you are. The knowledge of what God is to you and you are to him in the context of Isaiah 49, 16, which is your constitution, will enable you to be at peace. Why? Your own father says, I bow on my brother, Reverend Charles. I have. He said, behold, look. So if you are still doubting, look and be amazed. Understand that. I have indelibly imprinted you, tattooed you, not only here, but both hands of my hands. You are wars, you are circumstances, you are worries, you are movements, everything about you, you are siblings, you are children, you are spiritual well being. They are what? Permanently what? Before. I don't know whether somebody is getting this. That is how you handle crisis and chaos. You should know that he who has begun this work in you is well able, over capable to fulfill and finish it. He is able to deliver you to the uttermost. All those who come to him, he won't drop you halfway. He is too faithful to disappoint you. He is too faithful to leave you halfway. What he say is what he will do. Have you come to realize that? Is it only on your lips or on your actions? I have come to realize you are too faithful. Are you sure of that lyrics? Can you stand by it? When he appears to be silent for a while, Will you want to go back to the cares and pick it up by yourself? Will you remember that he has not left you halfway? My favorite scripture, Hebrews 13 verse 5, amplified. Your knowledge of the scripture is crucial in times like this for you to know how to cast your cares and leave it on the Lord. In this world, this is how you stand still. This is why you deal, how you deal with chaos. Look at it. Let not your character, a man without a character, a woman without a character, is zero. Fame will disappear. Character will outlive you. Write it down. Fame will disappear. They say he's very famous. He was a big basketball player. What was his character? That man was a man of God, a very popular evangelist. What was his character? Let your character or moral disposition be free from what? Love of money. Such as what? Greed. Avarice. These are species of what is defining as love of money. Craving for earthly possession. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and what you have. He's not saying you should not work hard. 
Say, content with godliness, what? Great gain. That's what he's trying to say here. Don't misunderstand scripture. I'm using that to explain this scripture. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain, as in Timothy. And be satisfied. Then he said, for he, this is my emphasis. Let's read together one to go. For he, God himself, has said, go on. I didn't hear you. One more time. When you have your foundation knowledge of a scripture like this, the tempest will hit you. The rains will beat at you. The cares of this world want to choke you. But you know one thing. I will not leave you. Repetition for emphasis. I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Relax. I, I've got you. The Americans say, I've got you. God is telling you, I've got you, my son, my daughter. In our local parlance, for those watching us via internet, no shaking. God is saying, my son, no shaking. Tell her, say, no shaking. That's what God is telling us. Because, casting of, because cares of life, pressures are the things that shake you. Say, no shaking. You're on the rock. You are inside the rock. Colossians 3 verse 3. To tell that you are inside the rock. Colossians 3 verse 3. You are inside the rock. Knowledge of that scripture will fortify you. For us. Okay, give me no, give me amplify uh, this thing. Give me KJV. Yes. Let's go back to King James now. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ where? Tell your neighbor, I have double divine insurance. I didn't hear you. Say, brother or sister, I have good news for you. I have double divine insurance. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Before they reach you, they will reach Christ. Then they will reach God. Is it possible? Now develop an understanding of scripture. No wonder Paul in Ephesians chapter 117 the Pauline prayer. Let's look at it. Because we allow situations in life to blind our understanding of the scripture. So I want to pray this prayer as I read it. Consider it a prayer. It is a prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom. And right, no, don't rush. Don't rush it. Please don't speed breed a constitution that is important to your situation. If not, you miss out the details. Please understand that. We don't speed read law. Provisions of the statute. For you to win a case, you must cite it properly, read it carefully, apply it properly, and use a previous decision in law to back up your case. Don't speed read your rights and privileges in Christ. You take time to watch television. You spend two hours, three hours, four hours. You spend 20 minutes to speed read the Bible. How will you know your rights and privileges? Paul, pray. As I round up gradually. That something is missing in you. That's why when you cast your care, you go back again to pick it up. Because there is something we have not seen as a body of Christ. I don't know your own. I have my own. But relate it to yourself as you hear this. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Where do you get knowledge from? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You search. You study to show yourself approved. This morning in the class, we learned that Jesus, because he has studied sufficiently the Old Testament, the scriptures, he could, he could quote from Leviticus, from Numbers, 
from First Samuel to tell the Pharisees that even David with his men had to eat shrewd bread, which was not supposed to be eaten by people. He was able to show the Pharisees that even the priests on Sunday were walking. So they profaned them. So yeah, they were blameless. So because they didn't have understanding of what Moses was teaching. Are we together? How Christ studied to show himself approved. He was a workman that needed not to be ashamed. He really divided the world to the Pharisees. And they were stopped in their tracks. Brethren, how much study of the gospel do you do? When was the last time you attended Thursday teaching? When did you create time to review? We've done part 13 as of today. Of the parables of Jesus. It's not a my my game. When was it like you sat down to go through parts 1 to 12? Or parts 1 and 2 or 3? That is how to study to show yourself approved. You bring out your Bible after church. You find time. You study your rights.